Grazie al professor Parsh che ci fa l'onore di essere con noi questa mattina, ai, ai relatori e eh, diamo subito la parola al primo rela relatore che è il professor eh, Ugo Parsh con Bandages and Elastic Stockings in SVT DVT. Grazie. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, first of all I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk to you here in this beautiful city of Naples and specifically Dr. De Francisis for the invitation. This is the title which was given to me, Bandages and Elastic Stocking in Superficial Venous Thrombosis and Deep Venous Thrombosis. I have no disclosures. So bandages and stockings, what is the difference? Here you see the pressure tracing of an inelastic bandage, starting with a pressure of more than 40 in the lying position. When we ask the patient to do those reflections, the pressure goes up to more than 60. And when the patient stands up from the lying position, the pressure rises from 40 to 60. The difference between standing and lying is what we call static stiffness index. So this is, these pressure peaks during movement, during ankle movement, those reflections, this is what we call massaging effect. So this is what you can uh, achieve with an inelastic bandage. In contrast to this, this is the pressure tracing of an elastic stocking, a so-called class two stocking. Please note that the scale has been reduced to one half and here we start with a resting pressure of 23. When we ask the patient to do those reflections, we come up to a pressure of 27, 28, and by standing up, the pressure rises by three millimeters of mercury. So what we call static stiffness index is much lower. If you look at these two examples, you may realize that also concerning effects, there should be some difference between inelastic bandages and compression stockings. Superficial phlebitis is my first uh, task to talk to you, compression in superficial phlebitis. As we know now, superficial phlebitis is the small sister in the family of thromboembolic diseases. And it was 1979 already when we observed that in superficial phlebitis cases, 34% had high probability lung scans, defects concerning pulmonary embolism. Most of them were completely asymptomatic. Only one from these 21 people had some symptoms. And here you see the scan, the lung scan, perfusion scan, before and after incision and expression of co and clots expression. One day later, you see there are defects here which have not been there before. So by incision and clot removal, we may sometimes not so rarely in 14% get new emboli which all are completely in clinical uh, silent. There's a consensus uh, statement coming out recently from Carlo Dicchi, Svartinova, Andrea Cialegra and all and others recommending that all patients with superficial phlebitis should be treated with compression treatment. And recommendation six says immediate mobilization with elastic compression is mandatory. Patients should not be confined to bed. When you look at these recommendations, we must say these are recommendations which are based on experience. The data are rather poor supporting these recommendations. We did a study uh, on consecutive patients with uh, superficial phlebitis, 53 patients, all had duplex investigation, and all of them were treated just by compression bandages, no anticoagulation at that time. 
and we looked two weeks later at the duplex and we have observed that 81% have improved, 13% had, were unchanged, 4%, two cases had new, palmar, new uh, deep vein thrombosis which were not there before, and one case showed ascension. And all these patients were treated by just compression bandages, walking, and no anticoagulation. When we compare these results which, with the data from the Callisto study, I mean, actually, this you cannot compare. This was done in 1,500 people, whereas only stockings without von der Beinux were given. New DVT was seen in 1.3%, so we had a certainly higher rate here, and ascension was seen in 3.4%. We had 2% as ascending events. This is one study which has been done some years ago, just compression without anticoagulation and just looking at the duplex. This is a study, a randomized control trial, which is still going on, which has the first preliminary results have been presented in this meeting here. And in this uh, study, randomized control trial, one group was treated with, uh, with compression stockings of class 2, and the other one had no compression, and all patients got low-dose mololum molecular white heparin and painkillers on demand for three weeks. So no compression versus compression. This is the only randomized control trial which we have up to now. These are the basic criteria of these two groups. I don't want to go into detail. There was no significant difference between it. And these uh, patients were observed, uh, uh, were asked for uh, pain concerning visual analog scale. And also what was done was the so-called Löwenberg test, putting a blood pressure cuff on the inflamed part of the leg and pressing and putting pressure in, you can find a difference between the healthy leg and this difference is a kind of objective criterion for pain, more objective than just the visual analog scale. And here you see the results. In the Löwenberg test, no stocking and stocking. After seven days, the stocking group showed certainly less Löwenberg difference concerning pain compared to the sto no stocking group. And here, the pain in visual log analog scale, there's a slight difference again after seven days. And if you look at the pain killer intake, the stocking had lower amount of painkillers which have been taken by the patients. So we can say there is at least some weak evidence that compression stockings 20, 30 to 30, 32 millimeters of mercury have some positive influence on pain reduction. But we must say that the pressure of compression, which is the dosage of, co of our treatment, has been completely neglected up to now. The stockings may have beneficial effect on edema and inflammation, but as we know, these stockings are much too weak to compress superficial veins in the upright position. And these are slides which we got in by MRI investigation to, done together with Giovanni Mosti. And here you see a patient who had large varicose veins and also enlarged deep veins. This is the soleal vein here. And we were surprised to see that the stocking of 22 millimeters of mercury was able to reduce the diameter of the deep veins considerably. The soleus vein was completely collapsed. But if you look at the superficial varicose veins, there was no change at all with a pressure of 22 millimeters of mercury in the standing position. This was a standing MRI. We need to go up with our pressure to 83 millimeters of mercury, 51, 83, in order to get some narrowing of the superficial varicose veins. So interesting result that we may 
close the deep veins with relative low pressure in the standing position, but not the superficial veins. And I know that uh, the speaker after me, Professor Uhl, will go more into detail on this finding. He has much ele more elegant uh, kind of pictures with him. So we need certainly future ra randomized controlled trials to assess the efficacy of, co of compression versus no compression, of stockings versus bandages, and the dose of compression, which is the pressure, should be measured in future studies. My second point is deep vein thrombosis concerning compression treatment, and here we find in the last uh, chest recommendation the sentence, in patients with acute symptomatic deep vein thrombosis of the leg, we suggest the use of compression stockings. This is a great 2B recommendation. And as a remark, you can read compression stockings should be worn for two years, and we suggest beyond that if patients have developed post-thrombotic syndrome and find the stocking helpful. So this is the last recommendation. When we look what compression is able to do in the thigh region, this is the femoral vein, and when we apply a pressure on the femoral on the thigh with 60 millimeters of mercury, then we can reduce the diameter of this thigh vein considerably. And if you have a thrombus inside, you may have a kind of more closer attachment to the vein wall. Here I try to reproduce this by duplex, taking a blood pressure cuff with an acetate window through which we could observe the deep veins. Yet this is the artery and this is the vein. And you see that the vein is certainly smaller under the compression of 60 millimeters of mercury and that also the thrombus is to some way kind of compressed. We should not forget that deep vein thrombosis is not just a clot occluding a vein. It's an inflammatory process in the vein wall and in the adventitia of this vein wall. And this may be the main uh, target of our compression treatment. As we know that compression is doing a lot of in the microcirculation also concerning uh, this massaging effect which I showed you. The, uh, this is experiments done by intermittent pneumatic compression where you have an intermittent strain increase and this intermittent increase of strain will release mediators from the, from the endothelial cell as you see uh, anti-inflammatory and anti-analgetic and anti-coagulatory factors are released. And this may be the most important effect of compression treatment. This is how we do it. This is our favorite bandage in deep vein thrombosis and also in superficial phlebitis. It's exactly modeled zinc-based bandage together with short stretch bandages over it, coming with a considerable pressure of 60, as you see, when we do those reflections, the pressure goes up in the lying position to 120, and by standing up, the pressure rises again to more than 100 millimeters of mercury. So we could say this is an intelligent bandage because it adjusts immediately to compensate for the increased hydrostatic pressure in the upright standing position. And see what happens here. We start after application with a pressure of 60, and after seven dose deflections, the pressure goes down to 45, 40 already. So you get an immediate reduction of pressure. And six hours later already, we have a pressure of 20, resting pressure, which is then well tolerated. So we did a study. Uh, it's the only study, as far as I know, where uh, bed rest was compared with compression stockings and with inelastic bandages in patients with proximal deep vein thrombosis. All of them got low molecular heparin, of course, in the initial phase, and they had two lung scans after nine days, and in these nine days you see the difference of the circumference of the leg. In the bed rest group, nearly no reduction of this edema in contrast to the una boot bandage and to the stocking bandage. With the una boot bandage, after nine days, we found no difference of the, of the edema of the two legs anymore. 
and looking at the Lovenberg difference on, on the pain scale assessed by visual analog scale. Again, the bed rest was the worst group and stockings and bandages were much better in reduction of pain using these two parameters. So in conclusion, we may say compression in acute, superficial and deep pain thrombosis is not only a good thing to do to prevent post-thrombotic syndrome, but it has also influence on the pain and swelling immediately. And these are patient-related outcome parameters which have neglected now, up to now mainly in studies concerning deep vein thrombosis and, sub, and superficial thrombosis. Bandages with higher pressures seem to be more effective, but we need to have data on this. Walking exercises are recommended to get this massaging effect and to, to have this influence on the microcirculation, which I briefly showed you. And of course, additional anticoagulation is mandatory, at least in deep end thrombosis. And as you know from the paranoxys discussed now, based on this Callisto study in superficial venous thrombosis, but this was not the task of my presentation. Thank you for your uh, attention.